Good morning, everyone. This is Kameshwari from Nalla Nasimhari Education Society Group of Institutions. My subject: Geotechnical Engineering. In the Geotechnical Engineering, today we are going to discuss about Unit Five: Shear Strength of Soils. The today's topics: Moss Coulomb Strength. So here in before classes we are already discussed Mohr's Coulomb theory, failures theory. That is equal to sigma one is equal to sigma three into n phi plus two c square root of n phi. So here we can substitute n phi in the place of one plus sine phi by one minus sine phi. Here, soil consists of a different soils. That is, cohesive soils and also cohesion less soils. Cohesive soils means C is equal to some value will be there. That's why sigma three into n phi plus two c square root of n phi. But non-cohesive soil that is equal to C is equal to zero. Now. Why? Because of c is equal to zero, c is equal to some value. In cohesive soil, here the graph between normal stress and shear stress. General equation in Coulomb's theory in this investigations observed that one component of the shear strength called the cohesion. Is constant for a given soil and is independent of the applied stress. And the shear strength of a soil at a point on a particular plane, on a particular plane, was expressed by Coulomb as a linear function of the normal stress on that plane. Linear stress. And that plane. This is the failure envelope. The graph is drawn between the normal stress and shear stress. Here, normal stress S is equal to C plus sigma tan phi. Stress is equal to shear strength is equal to S is equal to C plus sigma tan phi. S is equal to shear strength of soil. C is equal to cohesion, and sigma is equal to normal stress, and phi is equal to angle of internal friction. So C and phi, cohesion and angle of internal friction, as referred as shear strength parameters. So we can take the normal stress and shear strength. The graph is drawn between the normal stress and shear strength. Here the values approximately will mention here two to three trends. Somewhere the meeting point in between the this point to above that is equal C plus sigma tan phi. This is called as strength envelope. Here the angle in between these two is equal to phi. Tan phi is equal to answer. And here the uh, certain cohesion value will be there. That means the soil is C phi soil cohesion and angle of internal friction will be there. And another one is cohesion less soil. What is the difference between this diagram and this diagram? Here, C is equal to zero. The graph is um, flow through from origin. Generally, S is equal to C plus sigma tan phi. C plus sigma tan phi. So here, cohesion less soil. C is equal to zero. Cohesion less soil. C is equal to zero. So that means here the value will be zero. S is equal to sigma tan phi. So S is equal to sigma tan phi. The graph is drawn between normal stress and shear stress. So there are the soils which do not have cohesion. That means cohesion less. Cohesion less means sand. These soils derive the shear strength from the intergranular friction. So in this equation, S is equal to sigma. Tan phi. So examples of cohesive soils are sands and gravels. These soils are also called as frictional soils. 
now poorly cohesion poorly cohesion that means phi is equal to 0 these values are all com comes from the experiments only direct shear test we are done in our geotechnical engineering lab in that lab direct shear test will be there after completion of that test we are draw the graph between the normal stress and shear stress so after completion of that particular direct shear test we know the either the soil will be cozu soil or cozu less soil or poorly cozu soil or cohesion friction soil depend upon these four graphs here the soil will be cn5 soil here only cozu less soil here poorly cohesion means phi is equal to zero that means these are the soil which exhibit cohesion and angle of shearing resistance phi is equal to zero that is equal s is equal to c what's the formula s is equal to c plus sigma tan phi so here phi is equal to zero so this term will equal to zero only s is equal to c the graph is equal to s is equal to z horizontal so any example for related poorly cohesive soil is yes, we have example saturated clay that means entire voids filled by water only c soils c means cohesive soils and cohesive frictional soil c5 soil um, here the example is clay soil silty and sandy soil already we have discussed c is equal to s is equal to c plus sigma tan phi here c and phi values is both are there and shear test based on the dryness condition we have a different uh, dryness condition unconfined compression uncon unconsolidated undrained test consolidated drain test and unconsolidated undrained test consolidated drain unconsolidated drain test unconsolidated undrained test these are the three different dryness conditions these are applicable in triaxial test this test also we are conducted in our geotechnical engineering lab so in this type of soil no dryness is permitted through the consolidation stage the dryness is permitted in the single shear stage and this test is quick test and no time is allowed for consolidation. Consolidation test is long process. Compaction is short process, short time process. No time is uh, allowed for consolidation for dissipation of excess pore water pressure. The test can be conducted quickly in a few minutes. So expulsion of air voids from the soil is called as a compaction and expulsion of water from the soil is called as a consolidation and another one is here no time uh, no time is uh, allowed for consolidation for dissipation of excess pore water that's why this test is unconsolidation undrained undrained condition is uh, very quick and few minutes and consolidation come to consolidation undrained test consolidation so here uh, in the second stage when the um, specimen is sheared that means fails no dryness is permitted no drain is permitted so here the triaxial test is conducted by three stresses vertical load and uh, air pressure and also water pressure in this type of test the specimen is allowed to consolidate in the first stage allowed to consult in a first stage and a drain is permitted until the consolidation is completed. And third one is consolidation drain test. So here in this test, drain is permitted. The sample is allowed to consolidate in the first stage. In first stage, the soil is consolidated in first stage and when the consolidation is completed, it is sheared at a very slow rate to ensure that 
fully drained condition exists and the excess pore water is zero. This test is also known as drain test or slow test. Drain test or slow test. So here, uh, these are the three coins, consolidation drain test and the consolidated undrained test. Three points. And now, different test for strength, shear strength we are discussed, we are uh, in our geotechnical engineering lab, direct shear test, vein shear test, and triaxial compression test, unconfined compression test. These are the four tests for shear strength. What are the different shear tests conducted in our laboratory means? Direct shear test, vein shear test, triaxial compression test, and also unconfined compression test. Now you can see one by one. So this is the direct shear test apparatus. Direct shear test apparatus. So apparatus consists of a rollers. Here space one is two halves, upper half and the lower half. And you can insert at the bottom of the lower half and the top of the um, upper half. Porous stones will be provided. This is the one of the porous stone at the top and uh, in the bottom also. You can it can stuff with one uh, specimen will be there, separate box will be, shear box will be there. In the shear box, we can provide a top and bottom porous stones. And this is the normal loading platform. And this is the loading, loading pad and probing ring, reading for, you can take the readings. And these are the, container it consists of a probing ring reading for loading we can note, note down the values shear force um, a here what is the difference between direct shear test and vein shear test means in direct shear test the load will be applied in vertically but shearing will be horizontal here it will be two halves here in this portion this is will be two two halves so um, the box will be shear like this way horizontal direction the shear will be we can see in a naked eye in horizontal way but in vein shear test the shearing will be vertical so what is the procedure for direct shear test so first um, this is a old shear test uh, still uh, in use uh, quite simple to perform so the specimen the specimen to be tested is confined in a metal because our square cross section, square cross section that is split, split into two halves, square box split into two halves and two halves horizontally, two halves horizontally a small clearance being maintained between the two halves of the box. This is called as a shear box test. So the box is two halves, splits into two halves, split into two halves. And failure will be occur horizontally. 